डॉक्टर श्वेता बंसल आई एम अ पीडियाट्रिक हेमेटोलॉजिस्ट ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट एंड बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांट फिजिशियन आई एम वर्किंग इन एस आर सी सी हॉस्पिटल विच इज नियर हाजी अली इन मुंबई सो टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द ब्लड डिसऑर्डर्स इन चिल्ड्रेन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस ब्लड डिसऑर्डर्स विच वी फाइंड इन चिल्ड्रेन एंड समटाइम्स वी डोंट हैव क्योर फॉर देम एंड द ओनली क्योर फॉर देम इज दी बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांट various disorders you must have heard about like thalassemia sickle cell disease uh, you must have heard about the um, bone marrow failure syndromes like fankerney's anemia sideroblastic anemia sometimes in children we have marrow dysplastic syndromes also many of these uh, syndromes have genetic issues and there are genetic abnormalities are there and sometimes we think that if it is not there in the family the child may not have it but these are may not be hereditary but they may have a genetic abnormalities and because of that the child is manifesting these symptoms now so uh, uh, many of these patients in this what happened the blood uh, the bone marrow where the blood is formed the bone marrow is a place in our body where all the blood components are formed like hemoglobin rbcs uh for the platelets megakaryocytes are there and for the wbcs we have new uh, other cells are there all these are formed in the bone marrow and uh, these appear in our blood and because of that our body is able to function normally but when the bone marrow which is like a factory if it is not working well then these cells are not formed and sometimes if the patient hemoglobin is not formed properly like in the cases of sickle cell anemia or thalassemia then we have to give outside blood transfusions and some of the patients uh, like sideroblastic anemia or myelodysplastic syndromes many other cell lines also get affected and sometimes we have to give both blood and platelets to these patients so that they can live <coughs> now what happens <clears throat> when we give blood and platelets to this patient it is like a temporary uh, solution the body is not making anything but we are giving something from the outside but if we have to find a permanent solution then we have to make our bone marrow healthy and to make the bone marrow healthy we have to put a normal cells in it and from where the normal cells will come it is from the other sources which comes after the transplant so bone marrow transplant for these orders becomes a necessity if we are thinking of a cure in these children uh, now what is bone marrow transplant there are two types of bone marrow transplants one is autologous and second is allogeneic autologous transplants is means that we take out the bone marrow cells from the patient's own body and we infuse it we don't use this kind of a transplant for these uh, kind of disorders because we already know our bone marrow is not healthy we only use autologous transplants for different types of cancers like hodgkins lymphoma neuroblastoma or other solid tumors now for these disorders we do a allogeneic transplant what is allogeneic transplant it means we are taking the bone marrow cells from a person who is of the same species but somebody else not self okay so it can be the donor can be from the family only which could be mother father or a child's brother or sister or it could be unrelated anybody in the world who is having a complete hla match or there could be other sources of the bone marrow bone marrow stem cells which in, uh, so we take it from the bone marrow these stem cells we take these stem cells from the peripheral blood and sometimes we take it from the cord blood also okay but the most important thing is that there should be a hla matching so what is hla match it is actually a signature on the cells of the person's own body which tell whether this signature is matching with the other person's signature or not if there is a complete match then only the person will uh, say uh, then only the body will accept those cells as a self otherwise the body will reject completely so that's why we need to match the other person cells with the patient cells and then only we can say that that, that person can be the donor for that child or the patient who is bone marrow is affected so as i said this uh, this bone marrow cells can be taken from the relatives if there is a complete hla match and if the family is not having a match because in 70% of the cases we don't find a match we find match only in 30% of the cases so if we are not able to find the match then we have to uh, search for the donor from the registries from the bone marrow registries and then this is known as a unrelated match transplant then uh, the source of the cells could be either the bone marrow or the peripheral blood or the cord blood 
then um, how we uh, take the uh, this stem cells from these patients we actually uh, tell the donor that your match is complete now with some patient and your bones uh, your stem cells can help that patient to live so if you are willing then you can uh, donate those cells now for the donation uh, as i said various sources are there either we take it from the bone marrow depending upon the transplant type of the transplant or depending upon the patient disease and the physician we decide from where the bone marrow cells are to be taken sometimes we take it from the bone marrow sometimes we take it from the peripheral blood and sometimes if possible or if it is available we take it from the cord blood now what is cord blood cord blood is nothing actually it's the collection of the stem cells when the child has just born so we collect it from the umbilical cord and we keep it in small bags so they have certain cells which actually helps in the regeneration of the stem cells now um, what happens uh, when uh, nowadays uh, whenever the child is born we do the cord blood banking but some these children who are having a blood disorders they cannot use their own cords blood so they have to have a healthy cord blood from another child or some other um, uh, family or place so it is always advisable to not to do a private cord blood banking but to do a cord blood donation so that community banking of these cord blood can be done which can be used for the patients who are healthy cord blood can be used for the other patients where, who are in need of it and it can be very helpful for these children so i think this information if we can um, get and uh, uh, we can understand this information uh many patients can be helped and this lives can be saved thank you